works. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Hi. I'm Dolly Frank. I am the Florida Electronic Library Administrator. And I am also currently the interim Florida Library Youth Program Coordinator. And uh, so happy to be here. And I'm Katrina Harkness. I'm the adult learning consultant and also very happy to be here. And I am Amy Tipler, the continuing education coordinator. Um, and I am also happy to be here. And today we will be talking about the Real Florida Reader. Um, and like I said, this session is being recorded, but will only be available upon request until after it has been officially launched. Um, just to get into that a little bit, um, it hasn't been officially launched or announced yet. We are waiting um, for someone higher up, uh, maybe from the Department of State or Florida State Parks or even the First Lady to announce this um, to the public. So if you can keep this information to yourselves, please don't share out any details of the programs with patrons at this time. We'll be sending out an email to everyone um, with the information from this webinar later. Um, so just to get into um, this a little bit, so we're piloting a summer long initiative in conjunction with Oceans of Possibilities, the summer um, program theme. And this program is a result of a partnership between Florida State Parks, the Florida Department of State's Division of Library Information Services, which is us, and you, the public libraries throughout Florida. Um, and what this program does is it is supposed to help promote the exploration of Florida State Parks and public libraries. And we're hoping that it will increase the use of parks as well as um, increase library card signup, checkouts, and patrons' knowledge of your other services and programs during the program period. Um, so what will happen during this program is every library will receive um, a pack of free State Park Day passes, and Florida library card holders will be able to check out a park pass um, to get free admission for up to eight people in a vehicle for single day use entry. And so every library will be allocated two park passes. So for example, Leon County has seven library locations. They will be given 14 park passes to check out to the public. Um, so when we receive the passes from printing, which they're currently in printing right now, they we should get them any day now, um, we'll be ma mailing them out along with a sample poster, sample brochure, and a checklist with information, pretty much all the information that we're going to cover here today, um, and what you should expect from it, as well as some website links and other helpful information. Um, and just to make a note of that, the passes will be mailed to the main library or headquarters of every library system. Um, so, and we'll send out an email to the library director, letting them know that the packages are on their way. If you have another staff member that you would like for us to include on that email, other than yourselves, um, please let us know either in the chat and we'll be, we'll be saving the chat today or by emailing us. We have an email at the end of this presentation that you can send them to. Um, we'll all be checking it. So if you have someone else that you'd like to include on notification emails, please let us know. Um, but as it says on the last um, bullet point here, the state park passes will be valid from May 21st through September 12th. Um, May 21st has a little asterisk next to it because obviously May 21st is this weekend. Um, we haven't done an announcement yet. We're waiting for the passes to come back from printing. So that's what they say on the passes, but it could be um, actually launched at a later time. So we'll be keeping you in the loop with that, with emails, um, letting you know when it actually is officially announced. And there'll be press releases about it. Um, where, where, as you can imagine, the launch itself is a bit of an undertaking trying to get you know, Secretary of State or the First Lady or whomever it might be to come and speak and, and do the launch for it. Um, but we're really excited about it and we hope you are too. So the next thing that we'll talk about is just kind of going over some rules that come with the day park uh, day passes. Um, so as I said before, it's single day use entry for one passenger vehicle up to eight people. It does not include extra activity fees. So special events, museums, boat tours, instructor certification, diving, boat launching, rentals of picnic pavilions, kayaks, canoes, camping, lodging. None of those are covered. It's just the entry fee into the state park itself. 
Um, there are three exclusions, um, the L.A. Schiller Homosassa Springs State Park, Skyway Fishing Pier, and Wikiwachi Springs State Parks are not in included um, with this pass. Um, they will have to pay the normal fee to get into those parks. Um, and as you can imagine, this is a Florida State Parks program, so municipal, county parks, federal parks, national parks, and national wildlife refuges are not included. Um, if you live near a park that has an honor box, um, what you'll do is patrons will just enter the park where the honor box is being used, and they can just write Real Florida Reader on the blue honor slip and put that in the honor box, and then hang their Real Florida Reader pass. Um, it's a hanging pass um, from the rearview mirror or on their dashboard. And so now we're going to get into some other things with Katrina. Okay, so there are a few decisions for your library to make. One is how long is the circulation period for a park pass? Um, and this is, this is completely up to you. Do you want to loan this out for a day, for three days, for a week? Um, can holds be placed on the park pass or will it be first come first serve? The Georgia system does not allow holds, just as an example of what somebody else is doing. Um, but this again is entirely your local decision about whether you want to allow patrons to place a hold on the passes. And um, how will the passes be cataloged in your library system? I have an example again of what Georgia has done that I'm gonna share out to you. Um, if you would like for us to make an example pass in the, in the mark record to catalog one in our state system that you can use as a model. Please just let us know um, in the chat or email. That's something that, that we could do if that would be helpful to everybody. And lost or late passes. Um, we encourage you to not charge a fee for a lost pass as we plan to replace lost passes free of charge as long as we have them in stock. Um, we have a limited number of passes total, but you will not be charged for, um, for replacement pass. Um, so we suggest that patrons who lose those or turn them in late are not fined. Um, yeah. And uh, there, here's the email address for reporting uh, lost passes. And I'll go ahead and put that in chat as well. Oops, I can't. <laughs> we'll send that to you later in the email. Hi, so it's Dolly. And I'm gonna tell you a little about um, statistics. But first I wanna mention that um, as Kat said, we're gonna be printing some extra passes. So if you lose one to let us know at the continuing BLD email address. Um, I do wanna say that we aren't printing a million zillion extra park passes. And so uh, we'll continue to replace park passes for as long as we have a supply of extras. Um, we do realize that the uh, program is gonna be three months long. So we're, we're kind of confident that um, we'll, we'll have enough to cover all of the park passes that may go missing. Uh, but just, just in case uh, you're a very large system and you lose all of your park passes at once, we may have to limit the number that we send to you just because we don't, we are planning on having huge numbers of extras. And another thing um, that I wanted to mention before I get into the statistics is that the parks offers a lot of free programming to libraries. And I know many of you are already taking advantage of these. Things, but in case you hadn't had a chance to, to partner with your park service, they offer a wonderful uh, free programming through the ranger system. There's the, uh, the water safety programs, the ranger programs, the young ranger program, which is lots of fun. Do you wanna, Kat, do you wanna talk about that a little? Yeah, um, so the water safety program, and we're gonna share a, a, a screenshot and we'll share the links with this um, to you later as well. So the, the parks offer a free water safety program where they will bring everything. They'll bring bookmarks, they have the presenter. Some of the presenters are former Olymp Olympian, Olympic athletes um, and they have uh, book giveaways. So um, water safety is really important, especially as we're talking about oceans of possibility. Um, it, it's just, uh, unfortunately, sadly, uh, drowning is, is a 
uh, leading cause of death in young Floridians. And so as we're encouraging, enjoying the water, we also want to encourage um, um, enjoying it safely. And so they have a, a ready built program and um, that we can just send out to you and you can go right there and register for that for free. Yeah, thanks. So that's the interesting stuff. Let's talk a little about statistics. As you know, we ask for folks to count their summer program statistics and their circulation statistics and all sorts of different things. And we would like you to collect these circulation statistics as part of your summer program, um, but also separately so that we can monitor and see how much interest there has been in this program. This is a pilot program. We would like to be able to continue this and we'd like to see your circulation stats uh, to produce a case to be able to say, hey, yes, let's keep this program going. Maybe even make it year round so that it's not just for the, the, the summer, the summer time. Uh, we are going to be sending out a separate statistics form to, to all the participating libraries, uh, probably just on Wufu that says, please tell us what your statistics are. It's not going to be counted on either the flip summer statistics or the annual statistics re report as a separate box. These statistics can be included in both of those, in both the summer statistics, the summer reading statistics, and, and your annual um, statistics report. Uh, but we but we do want you to, to count them separately. And since neither of those has a separate box, we'll have to ask for that later. We'll be sending out that survey at the end of the summer, and, and the survey will be due in October. As Amy had mentioned earlier, that the real Florida Reader State Park passes won't be accepted after September 12th, but we don't expect you to send the park passes back to us. You don't need to do that. You can um, do with them as you will, but they won't be accepted at the parks after the after the 12th. We're hoping very much that we will be able to do this again next year um, with less short turnaround because this is a very rapid turnaround for us. So we'll have a little bit more information and, and be a little bit more ready to be able to um, give out promo materials and that sort of thing. But even though we're kind of late, we have marketing materials and resources that will be uh, available on a website that we're setting up. And uh, I think Amy T is going to show us some screenshots of that. Again, as, as Amy had mentioned, that we aren't going to be talking about this before the official launch. And so we aren't launching our website until after the official launch. But uh, Amy will show us some of those screenshots. So we're, we've created a, a great library page for uh, you to use. It's going to have marketing materials, a trifold brochure, some one-page informational flyers, some activity sheets. Um, and Amy, do you want to talk about any of these as you go through them? Yeah, so um, at the beginning of the website, you'll just see that there's some a quick overview of basically everything we've mentioned today, the what, where, who, when of the program. And then there's also at the bottom, you'll see checklist and information for libraries. Um, and this, the, this one I'll show you in just a moment. Um, there's a link to a public facing web page that will show um, that patrons will be pointed to for in all like promotional um, aspects. And then there's also a checklist for, for all libraries. Um, there's going to be a poster, as you can see, it's not linked yet because this is in it's still in its building stage, um, a brochure, a one shot for printing in grayscale. Um, if you don't want to do a more ink heavy brochure printout, and then the water safety that Katrina mentioned. Um, on our resources page for um, libraries, you'll see that there's information about accessibility at the parks. You'll see um, camping and lodging information, events that they have, trails, um, and then also some things for, for children as well. And we'll have some um, activity sheets that you can download and print out. Um, there's a scavenger hunt and a bucket list that they families can use at the Florida State Parks, as well as um, our Oceans of Possibilities um, activity packet that we have. 
Um, so that is the website for librarians um, that we have. And then I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for just a moment and I'm gonna show you the public facing webpage, um, which just bear with me just one moment. All right, so can everyone see this? So this is our web page for um, the public, and this is hosted on the Florida State Parks website. Um, it isn't obviously we're not going to be sharing it out with the public just yet. It's not um, live. It's not been launched yet. But this is just information for them about the program, about what Florida State Parks have to offer. Um, it does go over the rules that we went over earlier um, in this webinar. So, you know, exclusions of parks and things like that. Um, and then it also links to um, our summer reading program, information about that, and then also this really great map um, that our Secretary of State's office put together. Um, the red are libraries and the green are Florida State Parks. So patrons can use this as a way to discover new parks near them or if they're new to the area or haven't really visited many state parks, this will be a really great way for them to reference that pretty easily. Um, and it's all linked from this public facing web page that we have and that will be included on every brochure and social media posts um, that's where we're going to point patrons to for just the initial information. Um, so i'm going to stop sharing the screen and go back to our other screen, um, but if anyone has any questions at all, um, please feel free to drop them in the chat um, we'd love to answer anything that you guys have. Or if Katrina and Dolly have anything that I've missed. <laughs> so I see a couple of questions in the chat, Gladys. Uh, no, bookmobiles will not also be getting the passes, I'm, I'm afraid, um, unfortunately. Um, but, but let me say one thing about that. You will get a certain number of passes per outlet it's the, one of the choices of the library how you use those passes. So the bookmobiles won't be counted in terms of the total number that we distribute to you. But if you decide that the best use of your resource is to have those passes with your bookmobile, that is certainly your local decision and up to you. That's Pat, good point. Uh, let's see, I also saw one that said something about when can you start? You know, we... Uh... We would have said this week, except I think people may have heard the news that our Secretary of State is um, going to switch tomorrow. And we had originally planned to have the opening announcement later this week. I think it was going to be Thursday. So now we have to figure out when it's going to be. So I can't unfortunately answer that question, um, but we may be able to answer that a little later this week. Uh, let's see, what other questions have we got in the chat? I'm trying to see. One more question. Uh, this program is available for parks for the entire state, not just in the area, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yes, that is correct. Yes. All the state, all the Florida state parks, except for those, those three that we mentioned. Um, yes. Um, Another question is where, when do I sign up to get the passes? Will they be sent automatically? To whom will they be sent? So yes, we will be sending them automatically. We hope to start sending them this week. As soon as they get in from the printers, they will go to the, so the way we're planning on doing this is they're going to go to the headquarters of each library, but not just to like a cooperative office. So I see Gladys is on here. Um, at this point, we're planning on sending to all of your members as well as to you, but not all of them to you, Gladys, if that makes sense. So in the future, would these passes be for the summer months only or for the year round? Um, we don't know yet. This is a pilot project and we will hope, are hoping that it will lead to a year round, just a permanent situation that we have all the time to offer you. And that, but that's uh, to be decided and I'm going to say, jumping in here, that if, if you send us beautiful, wonderful, huge statistics, the chances of us being able to expand this to year round are much higher. So please, from the statistics geek that I am, please 
um, you know, make sure you, when you add this into your uh, circulating collections that uh, you're able to download this particular circulation out of your out of your search system by itself, so you can give us the numbers that that you've been able to circulate over the summer. Okay. I have another question, which is when is it okay to start advertising? And we're going to have to let you know in an email. Yeah, I think I think in an email um, when we, like I said, we very well may be able to say you can start advertising Friday. On the other hand, it could be later than that. I, I don't know. Um, you certainly, and I'm going to go out on the limb here. We're going to be sending you um, the park passes as soon as we get them from the printers. Um, I can't imagine that you couldn't start advertising after you've gotten them into your into the building at your place. I can't imagine that once you get them, you couldn't start advertising. But um, don't hold me on that. We're, we're, we're meeting with the secretary's office this week, early this week to figure these out. Um, how many, how, do we know how many passes we should anticipate getting? You should be getting two per outlet. So if if you're Leon County, you'll be getting 14. If you're, I think if it's Miami Dade, you'll be getting a hundred. That sounds about right. Another question: is it okay to let our libraries know what's coming? Yes, yes, it is absolutely okay. Yes, please, please, please let your libraries, let your outlets know that that this is coming. Let your catalogers know this is coming. <laughs> um, yes, the passes are circulating and it's completely up to you to let to, to decide what your circulation length is going to be, what your policies are going to be. It, it, it's up to you to do that. But yes, what we would like you to do is 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 put them into your system as a circulating item um, and check them out. Okay, another question. Do we need to specifically sign up for this program or will the passes be sent automatically? Automatically. So I hope you want them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will be coming. Another question, what happens if they are lost? So we have a, a limited number of passes just to replace free of cost. We won't be charging libraries uh, to replace those passes. We hope that you won't charge your patrons for later lost passes in this pilot program. Um, there is there are a limited number so right. but what you do is you just let us know and we'll send you replacement passes we'll just send them to you but as i had mentioned a little earlier and, and what kat just said here was that we have we're going to have a, a somewhat limited number of replacement passes so if again if you're miami Dade and you've lost all of your passes we may not be able to replace all of them um so so we will be replacing them. We just may not replace every single one if you've lost a lot, if that makes sense. Another question, are you going to send out an email letting us know when we can start advertising and link links to the brochure? Absolutely, yes. The instant, yes. Will these be sent to the library director? My guess is yes, they will be. But we also would like you to let us know if that's not what you want. Um, send us an email and tell us exactly who we should be sending them to if you don't want the director to get them. Uh, another question, can I get a set number of extras in anticipation of lost passes? Uh, no, it would be nice, but no. We haven't um, prepared for that. If, if maybe when we have our uh, permanent program in place that we can set aside some of those passes, but it just it just hasn't happened for this go around. Uh, you will email continuing education at BLD. Um, we had a, uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. Thank you, Amy. That's the continuing education BLD at DOSMyFlorida.com. That is the email that you'll email. Mm -hmm. have, I, have we missed any questions? Yes. If we haven't answered your question, please put it back in chat. And I, I saw um, earlier some folks had asked about the mark record. I did put the link to the Georgia example in in the chat. Is um, would you still like a Florida example, or did the Georgia example cover it for you? And we absolutely can do one here as a, as a mark record um, 
for you to copy or, you know. Does the pass cover a family or a single person? It covers eight people in your car. <laughs> I saw Casey jumped on that. Thank you, Casey. Got any more questions? And of course, we're always here to um, answer questions outside of this session as well. Okay, I can't see all of that question. I hear. Yeah. Our library circulates museum passes. Patrons bring their checkout receipts to the museum and we hold the pass. Will we be allowed to follow this or will patrons need the actual pass? Patrons they, will need the actual pass. After September 12th, do we need to do anything with the passes? It's up to you. Um, I would say you won't be circulating them anymore, but we don't need them back. Um, so whatever you would like to do with the passes, yeah, completely up to each of each of your systems, head of circulation, whoever whoever wants to choose to. It's just that they won't be accepted to the parks anymore, so um, you won't need to you won't be circulating them anymore. Okay. Can't see anymore. What else do we have? Maybe they're recyclable. Yes, maybe they will be. <laughs> Can you remind me how many we will receive? We have six branches in the Martin County Library System. We should probably be getting 12 done. 12, 12 passes. One, one for each. Well, one for each. Two for each outlet. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Two for each outlet. Um, so that's, yeah. Did you say we track circulation from 525 to 921, but they are only accepted in parks through 912? Uh, no, no, we're, you, tra you track circuit. I don't know that what we said, but it would be for from five. The tracking should, to should match. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It, it should, the tracking should match the, the period of time where it's accepted. Correct. Wait here a second and see if any more questions come in. I'm so excited to have all of you be part of this with us. I know this is something we've wanted to do for a long time and the parks are really excited about it as well. I know there've been great partnerships that your libraries have with the parks in your area and hope this will just continue to further those. We had had a, a great conversation with some uh, folks, a couple of I guess it was last month during our VLIS discussion, and and um, there were there were people who were talking about some great uh, kits that they had been purchasing to check out, and I think there was like a bird watching kit and a fishing kit, some backpack kits backpack, with binoculars yeah. in them. Mm -hmm. So they were very excited when they heard we kind of gave a, a sneak a sneak preview in that discussion, and so. We were we're excited to think that if if any other libraries out there have this sort of kit, or if you've got bird books that folks could check out, or if you've got how to tie fishing ties, I mean, there's all sorts of great things that you can start pulling out of your collections to kind of put it on display. Um, we're just so excited about the possibilities this could lead to. Yeah. Pamela over at Leon County says, thank you so much. This will hopefully help us with our library of things checkout. Yes, absolutely. If you've got a library of things, yes. And so this will be a, a thing to add to your things. Yeah. And thanks, Casey. Yes, it was a quick turnaround. And I know that you were incredibly instrumental in getting that started and getting that done. So As we appreciate you. Getting it started, then running away. <laughs> 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 Ooh, getting kayak kits. Yes. Yes. Ooh. I think I'm gonna have to go find your library so I can go there. Yeah, she did. She ran. Is she hey? So it's my local library. So hey, I love it. 
Yeah, kayak kits would be wonderful. And I think the parks are looking to put together some, some things along with that as well. Um, oh, there's also information about um, accessibility for parks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the parks have a checkout system for um, um, some, some vehicles that can make some of their parks more accessible. So if that's something, um, yeah. we need to get some more information from them about how to do that. And, and one of their state parks is newly dedicated specifically to be accessible. So we're, we're looking forward to that. That information will be on our website, the, yeah. the, the LIS website with information yeah, of the I program. Mean, yeah. yeah, and a lot of, a lot of parks have, um, strollers and, and different types of chairs to, to loan out to you, I think. You know, we certainly need the, the wide tires for wide some of these trails. Of them, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the ADA information won't be on the brochure, it'll be on the website. It, it, we should have some on our website and there'll be some also on the parks website about uh, accessibility. Have we gotten any other questions? I'm just looking to see if there are any others. Great, thanks. Thanks for getting that information out. Yeah, and we will absolutely, uh, we will absolutely be in touch. Um, as soon as we know when the launch is going to be, we will let you know. You can start advertising. And then they, we also, so on our on our website, which it's ready, it's pretty much ready to go. We just have to turn it on. So the, um, there'll be, we've got a brochure, we've got uh, information, we've got the check sheets, we've got a, a poster that you can print out. Um, and we're planning, when we send out the passes, we're planning on sending uh, some of these handouts and different, not, not tons, but examples of some of the handouts and information in those packets. So you get to see what they look like and and uh, have a place to start. So. So, uh, so we're going to hang out um, uh, for a bit in case anybody has any more questions, but that's all that we have to share with you. Um, be looking for the email. We'll, we'll let you know um, when we have uh, specific launch information, and we will be shipping those passes to you as soon as they come back from the printers. And again, if you've got folks that you want to be CC'd on the emails when we send them out to say, hey, heads up, they're coming. Like in case you need to let the mailroom know that there's a strange package coming in from the Department of State, don't throw it out. <laughs> like like any of those things, um, yeah, send us the the an email to that continuing education BLD uh, email and let us know any uh, differences, changes, people that you want included on that on that email that we're sending. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And we're so excited to be launching this. Thanks for all your help with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll stick around in case there's other folks or other questions that might come in. Um, we're trying not to add too much code tech, but we're filling the silence with chatter. So. <laughs> Yes, and uh, we have a survey. We'd love to hear your feedback about uh, today's uh, webinar presentation discussion. It, uh, Amy put that in the, the link in the chat. So if you have a chance to give us a little feedback, we'd love to hear from you. I'm just going to stop the recording now as people are leaving.